Okay, so now that we've talked about the organ on the con more conceptual side, now let's discuss the actual materials that we're going to need. So we can remove our design sheet out the way. So the first thing I want to discuss is the things we'll need as far as wood goes. So you're going to need about a 2x4 piece of wood here. This is a little less than 4 inches, but I chose this just because it was nice and smooth. Um, the other wood they had at Home Depot was kind of was kind of rough, so just kind of trying to keep everything neat. So a nice long piece of like 2x4 size wood. We're going to cut it to size anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You're going to need a thicker piece of wood. So this is for the contact board. This one here is for the contact board. Then as far as our encasing boards go, we're going to need one that's at least double the width of our contact board because um, it's going to need to be able to not only cover the, the length of the contacts and the pedal board over there, but also hold our MIDI encoder, where I think, I think I'm going to put it on here, but I'm not quite sure yet. And then we're going to need a slender piece, a more slender piece of wood um, that we're going to use for the top part of the lid. Um, I remember I mentioned it's going to sit on the edge. Um, and this will all become more clear um, as I start actually putting this together which, or it may not become more clear. Um, and then also, I chose this longer piece of wood here because um, I'm going to use this for underneath the pedal board, I mean underneath the uh, bench, um, and for this, I'm, that's going to be used to raise the bench up higher, so risers, because if you're taller, a regular organ bench like this is um, not going to be suitable for playing well for you. And then also, um, when I put the board under my keyboard initially, it was way too low because this is a piano height. So I'm going to use more risers. I'm going to make little wooden um, uh, cubes and then just raise this uh, up higher to meet the regular height that I would use for an organ. So that's as the wood side of things. Next thing are our fundamental components that I mentioned. So key, two keyboards. I'm going to be using a digital piano that I already have for practicing piano on. Um, this is just a regular Yamaha. Actually, it's, um, it has actually a nice touch to it because you can actually adjust the tension to try to make it feel more like a, an organ manual. And then I'm going to be using a MIDI um, keyboard. Um, this one, very inexpensive, um, and then I, this is just, uh, I think, 61 notes, and um, it also has a nice organ-like touch to it. So those are the keyboard side of things. Now, for the harder things to find, um, the pedal board. So the pedal board um, can be very inexpensive, like free, or they can be very expensive. So I highly recommend you just wait around until you can either find a cheap one or a very inexpensive one because you can they'll pop up on Craigslist and people are literally just trying to get rid of these things. Or you can find them on eBay. So this is the pedal board. I I held out months until I found an AGO style full 32 note pedal board. Um, so that's that. And it's also good if you find one you can always mount magnets to it, but if you can find one that already has them attached, that's nice too. And then sometimes on the back end, you'll have contacts back here rather than the magnets, and those are fine too. They'll just you probably would just have to do some wiring, which I didn't find that, so <laughs> I don't know anything about that. The hardest thing to find though was a bench, a bench that will fit over an AGO pedal board because nobody wants to sell you just the bench they want to sell you the whole organ so i actually had to drive down to north carolina from dc to find to get this pedal board which was well worth it um because i got this for only thirty dollars it's worn it's been very well used so i'll need to refinish it not today not tomorrow not this week but someday one day far away i will refinish this bench and it will be beautiful <laughs> all right so those are the main components, and as I mentioned, we're going to be using Hapwork, so you'll have to load that on your computer. Um, as far as incidental parts go, you need a couple things. So drill bits, screws, power drill, right? I just borrowed this from my wonderful neighbor. 
Um, so it pays to be nice to your neighbors because they will be nice back to you. A hammer, hobby knife. I think I'm going to use this for something. Um, a labeler. This, this will make your life easier, I think, when I go about labeling the wires. Um, next thing, you're going to need a saw. This saw I picked up very cheap from Home Depot, and it also came with this little nifty miter thing, so you can easily cut uh, you know, a straight line and keep everything nice and even. You'll be needing a multimeter. This probably will save our life in terms of making sure all our electrical contacts are working. You'll need some alligator clips. Um, this is the MIDI encoder. This is probably the most expensive part of the instrument that I have that I actually had to buy for this um, thing. Um, and this is from DTS, I believe, just a digital PC, PC1 uh, MIDI encoder. It has parts for, I think, up to four swell shoes, I believe. And then I got the Molex collect connectors, which are, should be easier. It has MIDI in and out, and then the um, power supply, which is right there, that green connection there. So that's the brain of our organ, right? And then for this, I'm going to be using um, these uh, wood screws to build our... Um, our, our um, contact board and our lid. I have some um, just regular flat end um, screws that were round headed screws. And this is going to be used for our electrical contacts for our reed switches, right? I have some washers. Um, yes, some wing nuts that we're going to be using, right? And um, these are just the regular round nuts that we'll be using. You'll need uh, quite a bit of, of uh, copper wire. I'm using, <laughs> just get some insulated wire, super cheap off of Amazon, especially if you have Prime and it gets here in two days for free, which is amazing. And then you'll be needing, I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna use this one. This is a nine volt, one amp, um, power supply that I got from just um, this little store here. I also have one over there that's a bit more powerful that I got from Radio Shack. So I'm either going to use that power supply or this power supply. I haven't yet decided, but we'll figure that out later. I also have some Velcro. Um, I think I'm going to use this. I was at the store and I was like, I could probably use this, so it may come in useful. I have some um, self-adhesive uh, felt pads, and these are just going to be using for the bottom so that no thing scratches up my floors, right? Um, USB MIDI out, so this is going to be plugging into our encoder over here, going to our computer so we can get the signal. You'll need some wire strippers, crimping tool, pliers, magnets, and this has worked out perfectly because I've had these things since like, man, elementary school. I don't know how, why I have them here in DC because I'm from West Virginia. So they made the trek with me, <laughs> which worked out. So these are our test magnets. And then you're gonna be needing some reed switches. Now, information about the reed switches. So I originally had used, um, which I'm not quite sure where I put them, glass um, reed switches, which are these things right here. And I'll explain how these work in a moment, but I highly recommend you spend a little bit extra money and get insulated reed switches. These are from some website I found called SparkFun, and they will save you frustration they will save you time, which equals more life enjoyment <laughs> over the long run. So these are a lot more durable than the glass ones. The glass ones are super cheap and they will work like they're super cheap. And you will be trying to tie off wire and crack. They will break and you will be miserable. <laughs> so spend the extra dollar, $2 per switch and just buy 32 
insulated reed switches. Okay, so that's pretty much the fundamentals. Um, like I said, very inexpensive to get all this stuff. The, the only really expensive thing is this guy. And so I truly believe, you know, you go buy a pedal board, what they're charging you for is just the effort to put this thing together. But hey, this will be fun. You get to learn about how electronics work. Well, at least I did because I literally had to self-teach myself all of this. <laughs> Besides a little bit of electricity stuff I did in physics in college. So with that said, the next step will be to um, get ready for our contact board. So I'll let you, you know, assemble everything. I like to lay everything out nice and neatly so I just have access to it on the go. Oh, and another thing you can do is I'm too lazy to go outside and inside to cut the wood, so I'm just going to take a plastic bag, cut it into a square, tape it to the floor, which is why I have duct tape. And then I'm going to saw and just put it together up here and then just vacuum up the crumbs that I don't get because I don't feel like running up and down the stairs to the garage to do that. So you can do whatever you want. But anyway, so that's that. Next step, um, contact board. So. Without further ado, let's do that.